every facet of national life including its sustainability is contingent upon the quality of its education quality education is the bedrock of any civilized society it plays a major role in the development of every nation to build human capital and produce qualitative minds that can propel the development of the state to greater heights there is no alternative to provision of standard education hence the Lagos State Government has continued to invest hugely in this sector. Since the inception of its administration, Governor Babatunde Raji Fashola has adopted several strategies to improve the standard of education being delivered in the state's public schools. One of these is the Lagos ECO Secondary Education Project, launched on the 16th of March 2010. With the support of the World Bank, it has helped in the transformation process in the state's public schools. Faced with poor performances by students in various examinations, a core project was introduced with the objective to support and enhance the educational performance of students across the state. Barely a year after the launch of this special intervention program, it has yielded positive results in this sector. This was achieved as a result of how the project is being managed. The strategy is to give fresh breath to the state's education system. It therefore recognizes the teacher as the manager of the classroom who must have all the tools and take management responsibility to putting them to optimum use. A core project addresses government's priority in human capital development. It thus supports public junior and secondary schools through grants performance-based incentives, teachers training and others. The objective as I mentioned is to enhance students' learning outcomes and we do that in various ways. First of all, we provide directly to all the 637 schools what we call the school development grant. That is, we have moved away from the traditional way of dispersing money into a much more modern approach and that modern approach is empowering the schools themselves to make decisions and to take account and be accountable to the learning that is going on in their schools. The funds go directly to them, they develop a plan and then based on it, the plan is based on the school's need to enhance learning outcomes. And then based on that approved school improvement plan by the education districts, the money is dispersed to them and they implement what is inside their school improvement plan. So that's one aspect. The other aspect is that for us to be able to say we want to improve learning outcomes, it means that we must also develop the technical skills or the capacity of the teachers as well in the modern way of teaching and learning. So we also have a component where there's emphasis on training, retraining and continuous professional development of our teachers. Then the other thing that we also have is that if we want to improve school, um, enhance students learning or improve students performance, it means that we also need to support our teachers. There are some teachers, there are some schools that have informed them that they don't have enough teachers in certain subject areas that we focus on, which is the English, Maths and Science. So we've developed a volunteer teacher scheme. And that volunteer teacher scheme, we have about 750 volunteers, registered teachers, professional teachers, who have come on board. And they are saying that instead of me being unemployed, being bored and not contributing to the society, I will give back by working in the schools to supplement the teachers' efforts. So we have volunteers and in fact we've recently recorded that our volunteers have contributed about 20,000 teaching hours every, uh, every month to teaching and learning in English, math, science and even some social um, skills as well. In our present world where development is driven by technology Educational institutions have become the pivotal centers of societal change, where educational system is well organized with adequate infrastructure, 
even secondary school students are involved in one form of invention or the other. The critical point here is infrastructure. Where adequate facilities are available, the motivational drive to impart knowledge is strengthened. The students or the pupils will also be in the right frame of mind to receive what is being imparted into them. Through ECO projects, grants were given directly to the schools to undertake infrastructural projects in areas of needs. Benefiting schools were therefore able to put into place such projects as rehabilitation, building of new classrooms, libraries, standard science and technical laboratories, staff rooms, toilets with boreholes among others. Uh, we thank God for Lagos State Government as part of the ECO project. The money given to us, we were able to make use of it to, to purchase things that we didn't know, making the school to be backward in terms of facilities. Like uh, the, when I got to this school, there was no library at all. And uh, when there is no library in the school, uh, easy culture, there is no way you can develop it. And that was the first thing I said that by his grace I will tackle. And we started by his grace and uh, we see where, where the library is as of today. Students, they are so happy. During break time, you will see them they reading. During free period, they will go there to read. And by that, you know, I can see that they are, they are the culture is being developed. There was nothing like an English language laboratory when I got here. Just a couple of days, we were able to set it up. We have a projector, we have a computer. Teachers were being trained to make use of it. And in fact, it's wonderful. You know, teachers were highly encouraged because they have enough at their disposal to teach. So then today they have a lot, you know, for this environment for them to learn. So a lot of things has been improved. We have mathematics even a room for the school. We have a lot of uh, teaching aids of various shapes, of various colors to attract, to arouse the interest of the students when it comes to mathematics. No, it's really a problem. But now things have changed, believe me, it has changed. I am very sure that that training they received during the two-week uh, period they were there in UK or in Gambia will help to impact the other teachers, even principals now, because the materials they brought, some, most of the things were stored in flash drives and they have promised us that they will make it available for all the principals in the district so that we too can be partakers of the good things that they were taught over there. The quality of teachers that we have in public secondary schools in Lagos State can not be compared to those in the private schools. Here we are masters in our subject areas. And moreover, the retraining program that Governor has introduced recently via the core project has made teachers high flyers in the public schools. Lagos ECO project was an initiative of the Lagos State Government in conjunction with the World Bank and it commenced um, two sessions ago. By now we have spent two years of the four year period that it will be in operation. And I will say that uh, this is the third year, 2009, 2010 and 2011. Okay. Uh, as a school, it has actually impacted so much on our performance vis-a-vis -vis, uh, teaching, learning activities in the school. I must say that uh, I came here in July 2009 and uh, the state of infrastructure here as I met it was a sorry sight. However, with a core project, we have become transformed, not only physically, as you can see the environment now, the new blinds, all this cutting, look over me, just directly opposite me, you can see all those awards, they are all from um, award one, either by the children or by the school, during quiz competitions, during um, uh, mass competitions and even exhibitions. Over there, you can see a gala of uh, certificates that the children have won in our outings. 
obviously before now we were not teaching before a core project we were not teaching with uh, the ICT there was nothing like e-learning but with the echo project coming in both teachers and the children even principal we are all learning together enjoying the provision that has been made before now there was no library at all in this school but with echo project we have been able to be a modern school indeed by having our own library with uh, shelves and books that are put there the ICT room 2 is a product of a, a core project. By complementing numerous other projects made through the Ministry of Education and the Special Committee for the Rehabilitation of Public Schools, a new phase of public school is being unfolded in Lagos State daily. It is a new phase of convenience, conducive and learning friendly environment. Things that make my school better than that school I knew is because of the infrastructural things, the materials they give us, the performance, our textbooks, free textbooks, the materials, um, the actions of the governor over our school, a core project, everything are working very well and it makes us you know, eager to even want to do more for the governor. It makes things comfortable for us, like our before, this school was not a school known at all. The chairs we have, they are, they are not even good. But now we have good furniture, even done by the Lagos State Governor again. And I really, really appreciate it from my, the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate it because before I might sit in class, I might not even easily understand what teacher is saying. But now, through everything, I now know that yes, education is the best legacy. Before, when they are teaching us, we don't have these materials that we used to understand. For example, if they want to look at a um, specific part of your body, the joints, you might not even know, but because you might just be seeing your fl um, your flesh. But when they bring the skeleton, when they bring everything, um, the uterus, baby in the uterus, um, everything we need, microscope, everything are just there for us. Before, me myself, I've never even used a microscope, but now I know a microscope to myself. Secondly, the library. Before, our library was not well equipped. But since the introduction of Eco Project into Lagos, it has really taken a lot of great impact. Now, most of the time, if I'm just, maybe I'm boring during break time, I'll just go to the library, start reading, encyclopedia, all those things. And to the fact of the computer lab, before I was not enabled to learn through the web, but now I'm enabled to learn through the web. Like, for example, the former fastest car, former fastest car was Bugatti. But now it is now Passat. All these things I don't know them before. Like for example, the botanical names of animals, like cheetah, their botanical names are Asinoix jubatos. This almond tree, their botanical names are Tamnira katapa. I know many things now through the internet and it has truly helped us seriously. Lagos Cycle Project has really done many things in my school. It has really allowed us to achieve many goals. It has done many things in our school that innovation, the infrastructures, the things that really made us put what that changed in our class into practical. That is the base science now. For instance, we don't know the parts, the things in our body, in the part of, part of our body. But now, we already know that yes, this is the mammalian eyes, whatever. And now the and mathematics too. Before, I I dislike mathematics like any other thing. But now, they really made me to understand mathematics and it made education really enjoy and interesting. Uh, furnitures are good. They are much and we even have space. We free ourselves. We are especially to what a child is teaching us and we are able to hear what she's teaching us. Too. And the class is very conducive for us. We enjoy it very well. The Echo Project Grant has done a lot in our school. With the money given to us by the Echo Project, it has been able to, the library has been improved. We now have books where we go to the library and read. And these books are current books that in our core subjects like mathematics, English, economics, biology, and commerce. This has helped to facilitate our, our understanding. We now have more knowledge about what is going on around us. More so, the, our classrooms, it has become conducive for us 
whereby we have demonstration tables. Our teachers can now put their equipment there for us to see and learn. We no longer have to strain our eyes to get what they are teaching. Most of our, our blackboards have been changed to marker boards. I can remember when I was in SS1, we were using, chalk, marker, uh, we're using chalkboards, but now we use marker boards. And this has really helped in our academics. Now we are improving in our performances. Those are concerns about mathematics. Our teachers get to teach geometries, and I don't see what is being taught. It comes to the class, say this is a spare. But recently, he came to the class and he brought a spare. And I was like, yes. So this is what it looks like. It is a solid shape, round. We even get to see globes, where we know the longitude and latitude. But then we never knew what it was like. We had to imagine it. Just difficult for us in understanding. But now we have them visibly, mostly in our English language. We get to use projectors in teaching. I can remember a very important subject, crosses and phrases. Until our English teacher, Mrs. Shogun, had to use the projector. Everyone in the class understood what she was saying. And then we were able to answer questions on crosses and phrases very well. I want to say thank you to Governor Babatunre Rajeshwakjala for what he has done because it has really made, he has really made education easy for us in terms of our environment, our learning, everything you can see around. It has really facilitated competition has arrived. We want to learn, we want to know more. And this is really good because it is an effort he has done to make Lagos State better. Learning has been made much more easy for us in this school because Echo Project has been trying a lot in the library aspect, the laboratories, the toilets, the classrooms, in fact, everything was just good. In the library aspect, we have books. We go there, we read, we are not restricted to enter the library. In fact, the lab as well, we have um, practicals there to make us understand more what our teachers have taught us. And also, the projectors, we watch movies pertaining to our studies, um, uh, the core subject like mathematics, English, biology, economics, and so on and so forth. And also in the toilet area, there is, there is improvement in sanitation in the school. After uh, visiting the toilet, you have water to wash your hand, everything has been painted, the library has been painted, um, and we have desk for you to sit comfortably with seats so that you read and you understand what you re read. The thought about the internet, everything that will make learning more conducive for us. Under a core project, teachers are being trained and retrained in the modern techniques of imparting knowledge in students. Instructional materials are also being provided for the teachers to facilitate teaching and the learning process in the state. As part of this policy and commitment to enhancing the development of education in the state, Governor Babatunde Raji Fashala's administration, through a core project, recently conferred awards for best performances in its Maiden Governor Education Award. 126 junior and senior secondary schools, principals and pupils were recognized based on their progress and improved results. Governor Fashala presented 2 million Nara check each to the schools while the top two principals from each of the six educational districts were sponsored abroad for training. This is no doubt a big boost to the morale of a group of people that were reeling under neglect. Such a gesture will encourage other principals and teachers alike to put in their best. The present programs hold profound impact on the standard of Lagos State education system. In particular, it will not only empower the youth to unleash their potentials, it will enhance the production of quality minds that can compete with their peers anywhere in the world. The World Bank, which partnered the state in this initiative, has rated a core project as highly satisfactory. In building on the enormous educational infrastructure, Lagos State has a lot of benefits to gain. One of the most important being that it would allow the state education system to properly discharge its responsibility of equipping the younger generation, building them into the state's pool of human resource needed to promote its 10-point development agenda. The pathway to enduring development rests squarely upon the quality of manpower 
available locally in the state. If a status Lagos is now being compared in terms of educational provision to Ghana as a country, then action or inaction on the part of the state will have great consequences on the nation. For Governor Babatunde Raji Fashola's administration, this is where the challenge lies. With 485,073 students in primary schools, 320,183 in junior secondary, 254,588 in senior secondary schools, and 5,299 in technical colleges, including 37,423 teachers in secondary schools alone. This challenge is real. Yes, there has been massive construction of new classroom blocks across the state. Production of 367,000 262 pairs of desks and benches for ECCD. Primary, junior and senior secondary school students as teachers and principals were not also left out. It has also supplied 8,419,424 textbooks free to pupils and students in public schools, recruited teachers, constructed school fences to improve security and discipline in schools amongst others just like other numerous initiatives to reposition the educational sector in lagos state a cost secondary education project underscores the commitment of governor babatunde raji fashola's administration to free qualitative and functional educational system combined together they have been responsible for the encouraging turnaround and improvement that has been the lot of the schools especially peoples in the state. When we look at our governor, it represents ECO itself. Now when we look at the E, it represents education. The K represents knowledge. The O represents organization. When we look at all this together, it brings about what we are all talking about here. He wants the students, he wants the young generation to be educated. He wants us to grab the knowledge that will help the next generation of Lagosians and he wants us to be organized.
But today the story is changing. Roads are being built, water supply, a new magistrate court, a new hospital center, a new abattoir, and there's so much more going on here. There is no limit to the development and making life better for the people of any society or state. This, the present administration of Lagos State, has continually upheld since inception as far from speculations. The BRF administration has been making developmental progress in all facets of life of Lagosians. So far, since the beginning of the second term of this administration, no one has been put in doubt about the ability of the administration to sustain the tempo of the move against infrastructural decay all around the state. Without being immodest, it is obvious that monumental achievements have been recorded in governance in Lagos State under the leadership of Babatunde Raji Fashala. A testimony of the above premise is the construction commissioning and handing over of his alma mater, Beth Freeman High School, Surulere. The construction of Beth Freeman High School came as a result of the decay that had badly hit the school's infrastructure. Governor Fashola was a student of the school between September 1973 to June 1978. No doubt, Beth Freeman High School helped shape the character of who we have today as the governor of Lagos State. As a 10 year old boy, oh. my first day at secondary school, we started from one. <laughs> but almost too quickly, five years rolled back, and we were signed to leave in June 1978. But in spite of those inevitable departures, I met a lot of good people. I met lifelong friends, many of whom I still keep today. Incidentally, one of them is now my special advisor of taxation and revenue, Sabi Balatunipo, who was also a classic in this very I was also privileged to have met great teachers, humanists who are absolutely committed to the development of young people and enriching the human capital of this country. But this was where we were living. This was where I was living. This was where my character was formed. This was where I learned leadership. This was where I learned to be punctual as a school critic because I had to apprehend the newcomers. <laughs> they were all very fond memories for me. I treasured them daily until I came here sometime in 2007, 2008, after I had been done with some problem with them. I remember that Sunday afternoon. I was learning here with an inner excitement. I was eager to show my age, my personal assistant, my ABC, where my classroom was, and hopefully where my seat was. But nothing could have prepared me for what I meant. Not only are the classroom blocks made up of those wooden walls disappeared, the dining room, the principal's block, the senior's door, the shadows of themselves. My very present memory has been shattered. I was dealing with a very shocking and painful reality of what had supplanted it. It seemed that everything that I could point to as references of who I was had disappeared. All of it almost, except for one thing. The only point did not disappear. The newly constructed blocks have 21 classrooms with a capacity for 1,050 students, a hall with a capacity for 450 students, a modern principal's office, a teacher's office, an ICT, 
Information and Communication Technology Laboratory. Fulfillment of MDG goals 4 and 5 and in improving maternal and infant child health indices, another maternal and child health center was commissioned in Ajeromi General Hospital. Ajeromi local government area is one of the highly populated areas of Lagos State. To strategically address the unacceptably high infant and maternal mortality indices in the state, using the integrated maternal, newborn and child health IMNCH approach, this administration considers enhanced geographical access to integrated maternal and pediatric services a step in the right direction. I stand before you to fulfill an electoral promise that we made of making life more meaningful for all of you who trust us with power, who vote us to office. We bring the good tidings of safe delivery to our mothers and a healthy living to our children in the Ajeromi area of Lagos. We demonstrate to our people not only that your government has the capacity to inf reduce infant and maternal but it also has to deliver improved health care for children and mothers. Maternal and child health remain critical determinants of global national health. Women of childbearing age and the pediatric group constitute a significant and vulnerable segment of the people of Lagos State. To this end, we will continue to strive for their utmost comfort and their healthy well-being. The Ajeromi Maternal and Child Care Center that we officially hand over today is the fourth of its type that our government has opened to the public. It is a 100-bed, specially designed hospital for women and children. It is a decisive response to the problems of access and distance in the way that they compound the indices of infant and maternal mortality. The first of this type of facility was delivered in Ikurudu. The second one was delivered in Isolo and the third one in the Fakoyjai. This is the fourth. The maternal and child centers at Ikurudu, Isolo, and Ifakojai were commissioned in the first quarter of 2010. Throughout their first 21 months of operations, these three facilities recorded a total of 89,255 antenatal clinic attendances. They recorded 15,091 gynecological clinic attendances and 121,000 pediatric clinic attendances, out of which 5,335 children representing 4% required hospitalization. 
out of the total of 9,689 deliveries conducted to date at these three facilities, 3,653 of them, which represented 38%, were cesarean sections. Until your government provided these facilities, women in labor who required special attention like cesarean section had to travel from Ikurudu, Isolo, and Ifakwejai, all heading in one direction to an Ike house in Ikeja. Sometimes during this travel, complications in labor occur and the worst happens. We lose either the child, the mother, or sometimes both of them. Since we started building these centers, the story has changed. The incidence of death, the incidence of death during labor has dropped significantly because the facilities in Ikurudu, the one in Isolo, and the one in Ifakojai are now serving their purpose. For us, this is taxpayers' money very well spent. Even as we speak now, Aike House, the flagship, is now undergoing a major reconstruction with new equipment to be supplied to bring it to standards that we now have in these new centers. This type of facility is now ready for handover in Surulere, in Amu Ward of Fing, and in Alimosho, while the one in Ibejuleki is still under construction. The maternal and child center is a 100-bed center that has been adequately furnished and equipped to provide optimal patient care commensurate with global best practices. Also available are theater, anesthetic equipment for surgical procedures, autoclaves, bedpan disinfectors and washers, as well as laboratory equipment. Scope of service delivery include emergency services, outpatient clinics, family planning services, laboratory services, inpatient facilities, operating theater facilities, and delivery facilities. Every minute in a day, somewhere in the world, a woman dies from pregnancy-related complications, such that this represents a significant cause of death among women of reproductive age. 90% of these deaths occur in developing countries as a result of delivery by unskilled birth attendants, hemorrhage, that's bleeding, infection, obstructed labor, and malaria. It is tragic that these women do not die from diseases, but in the course of a normal life enhancing process of procreation. A significant percentage of disease burden in children under the age of five years is related to poor maternal health. Evidence abounds that interventions directed at reducing maternal mortality indirectly reduce infant mortality and improve the quality of life of the child as motherless children are ten times more likely to die within two years of the death of their mothers. The political will and the support of this administration targeted at improving maternal and child health at all levels of care is consummate. The concept of the construction of the maternal and child health centers was mooted with the conviction that these interventions would impact positively on the health indices of mothers and children. Twenty of the 24 secondary health facilities in the state provide maternal health services and 22 of them provide child health services. Ajeromi General Hospital is the only public secondary health facility in Ajeromi local government area and a follow, a follow to LCDA. It is a landmass of 13.9 square kilometers and a population density of 120,542 per kilometer square, which is the highest in the state. A health facility over the three year period from 2008 to 2010 witnessed a 33% increase in annual antenatal clinic attendance and also a 5% increase in total number of deliveries. I am confident 
that the commissioner of this center to provide additional referral facilities for the functional primary health clinics in this local government area will, with the cooperation of the good people of Ajerobi, yield the much desired and anticipated impact towards the attainment of the relevant Millennium Development Goals. <laughs> Meanwhile, other efforts by the state government to reduce mortality rate in women and children include the indoor residual spraying IRS. This is the spraying of households to combat mosquitoes and the free distribution of long-lasting insecticide treated nets to all houses in Lagos State. All this is geared towards combating malaria. The provision of potable water in Lagos State remains a major focal point for the present administration and a lot of efforts have been geared towards fulfilling this with the construction of many waterworks across the state. The latest one that was commissioned is the Alausa Waterworks situated in Alausa Ikeja. For the people of the Alausa area, this is a welcome development and a right step in the right direction. As no doubt, water plays a significant role because sanitation cannot be done where there is no water supply. The beauty of these Alausa waterworks is that it is two-in-one as the old waterworks within that particular premises was rehabilitated and has the capacity to produce 300 gallons per day while the newly constructed one has the capacity to produce 1 million gallons per day bringing to total 1.3 million gallons per day into the system. The world of Alaus are not just government secretariat and I want to believe also the residents around, around Alaus are also the beneficiary of this project. So we thank God for helping us to achieve uh, another of our promise to provide water. And I believe in other areas of Lagos where we are, we are yet to reach. By the time the Adinion or the Mola projects are completed, I am sure the hope of Lagos or the other parts of Lagos will begin to benefit. And incidentally, uh, the government is very happy that we are also planning ahead. We recognize the fact that this is a mega city. And as a mega city that is likely to be the mega city in years ago, we are already planning ahead to provide over 700 million gallons of water for the people, for the population of 29 million people. That is very significant. It shows us a government that is very committed, not an alternate, a government that plans ahead, a government that is visionary, and a government that has vision. That, to that extent, I believe that the people of Lagos State never had it so good. This project, being one under the Envoy World Bank project, that is the second urban water reform project, in collaboration with the state government, is the first of four mini waterworks which will be commissioned by His Excellency. This is a special project in this sense. We have two mini waterworks in one. A rehabilitated 300,000 gallons per day existing waterworks which was constructed in about 1982 which was rehabilitated 
back up to its installed capacity of 300,000 gallons per day. And the former waterworks, which was then constructed within the same premises at the back, with a design capacity of 1 million gallons per day. So we have two waterworks in one. At the end of the day, we therefore have the small capacity of 1.3 million gallons per day. To the glory of God, to the benefit of the entire Alausa population, and to the glory of mankind, we are here back commission this water project for the people. We have many water uh, this many water works for the people of Alausa. Other efforts that have been put in place for the citizens include the construction of the independent power plant IPP in March 2010, situated at Akute. It is the first of its kind in Nigeria, whose major function is to supply power to the three major waterworks Akute, Iju, and Adinya. The IPP has been running non stop since it was commissioned and has pushed water supply to 55% as against 30% in the past. Also is the construction of 15 mini water works with each supplying 2 million gallons daily to the metropolis out of which 10 have been commissioned and 5 will be completed by the first quarter of next year. There is also the ongoing construction of Otaikosi Waterworks to be completed by December this year to supply 4 million gallons daily and will serve 11 communities between Ikorodu and Ekpe Township. 2 million gallons daily waterworks at Aguda and ongoing construction of 2 million gallons daily mini waterworks at Alexandra Ikoi to help boost water supply along that corridor. Furthermore is the major rehabilitation of mains at Oshodi, while work has commenced on mains at Ikoi, Lagos Island and Victoria Island and before the end of 2011, mains extension will be carried out in 13 local governments. No doubt, sustaining and fulfilling of promises to the populace in Lagos State has been stemmed up and is seen as a continuous process. This is evident in the overwhelming results of the April 2011 elections.